So, um, I think it was a bigger year than perhaps we all remember. It's difficult, like, when there's this storm of React news all the time, it's easy to forget what's going on in Emberland, but as I was going through it, putting these slides together, it wore me out. There's so much happened. So, in March, EmberConf 2015 with some pretty enormous announcements. Glimmer among them, an amazing lineup of speakers, apart from one Englishman who couldn't really keep it together. Um, I, I don't know how many people went. I attended and absolutely loved it and attended the previous year and loved it too. This is an awesome, awesome conference. And we managed to pull off one in London too in November and I think this turned out really, really well. And it's something I hope we can repeat this year if circumstances allow. Um, the RFCs process appeared last year. I, felt, I feel like we've always had this, and it's so important to the way the community works and the way new features land that I, I can't remember living without it, but this actually landed at the beginning of 2015, and I think it's now really fundamental to the way new stuff happens in Ember. Um, also, Ember Twiddle appeared. You know, I think for a long time, JSBin was, you know, not to knock JSBin, it's fantastic, but it was kind of good enough for the purposes of demonstrating Ember things, but it, as Ember CLI took off, it started to drift further and further away from the experience there, and Ember Twiddle has course corrected that dramatically. Now it's the thing I think we all reach for when you want to quickly sketch up an Ember app, share that code with someone else, collaborate on a problem. And Ember CLI itself has been just astonishing this year, especially recently as um, performance improvements of snuck in from Steph Penner and build times have dropped by a factor of 10. I think this has become the, the delivery engine for the Ember message, really. This is, this is what's selling people in. And Babel, Babel 6, released on stage at EmberConf. I think Babel's changed everything about the way we work with JavaScript. And it's weird to think that before Babel, again, um, ES Next and Tracer were these tools which people were experimenting with but didn't see adoption, it seemed like maybe just complicating things, and then Babel arrives, and Bar Babel's, it's like a, a no-brainer, it's just got that right feel, it's, it operates at the right level, it just does all the right things. Okay, so, hard problems that we solved in the Ember community. Simulating data sources with Ember CLI Mirage, or the Mirage project. Um, hands up who uses Mirage in their apps? That's pretty much everyone. Excuse the croaky voice. Um, this has been a real game changer, and it seems, to have, it seems to have taken off in every step of the stack. Some people run production sites where the data is coming from Mirage just because it's such a nice way to model it. Um, it makes testing easier, it makes development easier, and the people behind it, Sam Selikoff and the team, just seem so amenable to new ideas and so friendly. Uh, deployment, Ember CLI Deploy, has revolutionized this with the perfect <coughs> mental model, and again, an incredibly open and welcoming team, including our own Aaron Chambers, who I don't think is along tonight, but he's done incredible work on that. <coughs> Animation. Bef this is another one where before Liquid Fire, it just seemed like everyone was punting on it, and there were answers here and there, and it was like, you know, use a did insert element hook, or just kind of roll your own solution. And then Liquid Fire landed, and it wasn't that it immediately solved everything, but it definitely gave us the primitives, I think, out of the box. The idea that th the way you could declaratively mark up your templates to encapsulate animation. And, I mean, this is maybe a half tick, as fast boot is still alpha, but I think the progress so far is really, really promising. And fast boot definitely addresses this problem at every single level. And I think it's a really impressive act of thinking through a problem, like really, really thoroughly, like all the way to the end for every possible angle. And when it's out, it's something that should solve it in, you know, in a, a one-line install for almost all of us. Um, HTML bars landed in early 2015, and then was quickly followed by Glimmer, and now Glimmer 2. And I think it's interesting the progress that has been made since, since HTML bars arrived. Handlebars seem completely fine for so long. The script metamorph tags seem completely fine for so long. But once the back was broken of that problem, it seems like progress has just come in more, more and more rapid iterations. Ember data became stable, 
and has now hit version 2 in lockstep with Ember itself. Um, we'll talk about JSON API in the next slide, but Ember data, I think, has reached a point where it almost, dare I say, it feels quite lightweight now. Like, it's not the heavy, cumbersome burden that I think we might have felt it was at the start of 2015. Now, its role and the things it does are very precise, very surgical. And JSON API version 1 was released. Now, this isn't Ember specific, but this is something that the Ember community was heavily involved in and we all stand to benefit from. Um, there are some good podcast interviews with Yehuda speaking about this. I think the last episode of the change log, he covered the philosophy behind it in quite some detail. I'd recommend checking that out. Okay, now on to resources from the community. Ember 101, formerly Ember CLI 101, went Creative Commons and free. This is a wonderful introduction to Ember, so if you think you're learning Ember, you can pick up this book for free. You can contribute to it. It's excellent. Uh, Rock and Roll with Ember.js by Balan Serdi. I've not read this personally, but I know people who have and say it's fantastic. One from Pragprog. Matthew White, no relation to me, I don't think. Um, I've heard this one's excellent too. And actually, there's, um, if you look on emberwatch.com, there's a stack more fully-fledged actual paper books on Ember. Ember Observer landed. Um, this was announced by Katie Gangler at EmberConf in March. Again, it feels like we've had this for ages now as well. It's become so important to everyone's workflow. Um, and it's become, I don't know about all of you, but this has become my go-to resource for learning about add-ons. And also, once you have an add-on in the wild, getting that all-important 10 out of 10 on Ember Observer is the coveted prize. Uh, Ember Screencasts, I've been really impressed by this. When I met Jeffrey Biles for the first time at, um, at EmberConf, he said, yeah, I think I'm, I'm thinking of starting up a regular screencast thing. I've got the domain name. I think I'm going to do it. And he's just churned out content video after video, week after week. Um, and these are excellent. So this is, this is now a well-established, trusted resource. Uh, podcasts. Emberland, this is the one where Robert Jackson tells you what's really going on every couple of weeks or so. Well worth subscribing to. Ember Weekend is a, it's a great companion for that. That's a couple of guys from um, Hash Rocket, I believe. That's really good. And the Frontside Podcast, which isn't always about Ember, but largely is and often has interviews with people from the Ember community. And this is a, a brand new one. The, it's the podcast companion to the modern web UI meetups in San Francisco. <laughs> and this one kicked off with uh, Yehuda being interviewed by, I can't remember at all, but it was excellent. Um, and the global, the global Ember meetup is a really interesting new entrance to all of this. So this is a virtual online meetup. Miguel, you're speaking at the next one, is that right? Yes, this Saturday. This Saturday. It's um, probably the same talk with this, the extended version of the talk I'm going to give. Okay for the uncut talk, tune into to Oak Glen uh, Global Ember Meetup. OK, so that's the tip of the iceberg of what happened in 2015. Obviously, there was loads more than that, but those are the things that stuck out for me to really paint the picture of how much richer the community's become in that time. So um, I want to talk a little bit about what we've got planned for 2016, or the kind of things we're thinking about. This is about Ember London primarily. There's only a few points. I'm nearly at the end of this gigantic ultra ramble. Um, so the first thing is diversity. Now, we are really proud of the community that's grown up around Ember here in London. We think it's done great things. We think it's contributed back to Ember in a fantastic way. But we'll, we're never as diverse as we want to be in terms of where people are coming from, in terms of gender identity everything, the kind of context people are coming from. And we want to try and improve that as we grow. We think this community is going to grow this year. And as it does, we want it to grow in a diverse way. Um, I spoke to um, a diversity consultant on the phone last week. And one of the things she suggested was to, it wasn't just a matter of me standing up here and saying, we're going to do this. I need you all behind me to do it. And when I say behind me, I mean behind me and Ken and Nick and the organizers. Um, so I want to give you some of the reasons why we think it's important. So that first one, a richer mix of experiences and perspectives, 
is something that we believe feeds into the quality of the code we all write, of the kind of user experiences that we all write, of the kind of conversations we have together, the kind of apps we build, the kind of problems we try to address. The more and richer variety of points of view we have in the community, the better we think we'll be. And this is something that needs to happen for our industry as a whole. And if we can play a part in that, then that's wonderful. And finally, we just think it's the right thing to do. So what's the plan? Well, we want to have more diverse speakers. How are we going to do that? Well, largely it involves fielding speakers from other parts of the industry, from other meetups, from universities, from academia, and this kind of thing. And so this is something we need your help with. So if you attend any other meetups or conferences and you see a speaker and you think the kind of things they're talking about would be of interest here, then we'd love to know about it. Um, and similarly, you know, when, whenever I'm at a meetup and I see someone give an interesting talk, I always invite them to speak here. Um, secondly, we, we are beginning the process. We've always had, we've always linked to the um, confcodeofconduct.com code of conduct, which is a good kind of generic base for codes of conduct. But now we're taking the step of having our own so that we can spell out our specific policies around this. And I'll show you a bit of that in a second. Um, Marketing is something that we don't really do in any significant way. We tweet about these meetups. We email the full mailing list, a bit of Google Plus. Beyond that, Slack a bit, I guess. But it's, it's kind of like it's more word of mouth than anything at the moment. So we'll be looking at how we can reach out to wider audiences. And apart from that, we didn't know exactly how to approach it, which is why um, we've spoken to a consultant, Ash Dryden, who's fairly well known and runs AlterConf in the US. Um, and what I hope to do is commission her to work with us throughout the year to really, really do wonderful things and tackle this and make ourselves better and more diverse. Um, so the code of conduct, we're, we're taking a new approach with all these bits of the community. Uh, this is GitHub Emma London slash code of conduct. Uh, this is the first draft that's in there at the moment, and I welcome everyone to come and give your feedback, make pull requests, suggestions. Broadly, what it says is we won't tolerate any kind of harassment of our members. Everyone who comes here should feel welcome, should feel comfortable, should feel safe. And if anyone is harassed, we will, we will deal with it. We will have a clear policy on what will happen, how you should report it, you know, how things will be treated in confidence. We, so the idea is this, this will make everything absolutely clear so that if anyone does have any fears about coming along to this kind of event, this should hopefully address them as best we can. So uh, to support all these efforts and largely to uh, pay the, the commission, the consultant we'd like to hire, we are seeking sponsors for Ember London Diversity for 2016. So previously when people have approached us about sponsorship, We've said, well, uh, you can sponsor food at the project nights. And beyond that, we don't really have that many costs. This is something that would be great to put money towards. So if any companies are interested in helping us with this, we would be delighted. Um, next thing for 2016, project nights. So who's been to one of our project nights? So the way these work is usually they are the week after the meetup. Um, there's not one in January just because there's not enough time to organize. So one week after the meetup, and the idea is it's a similar kind of gathering of programmers to work on any Ember project you fancy working on. So that could be making a pull request to Ember itself. It could be your own toy project. It could be your work project. It could be just to come along and learn or teach or hang out with people. But it's a meetup without the talks, effectively. Um, and the thing that's different this year is that we want to host them in more different places. So last year, they were all hosted at the office I work in. This year, the plan is to build a roster of different venues around town with different companies, and we will move between these different venues each month. So um, you can probably just about make out who's on the roster so far. We've got Alpha Science, Struva, with Associates, who I, who I work for, and Zapnito. Um, again, if your company would like to be on this roster and host one of these project nights, make a pull request or email us. Um, and this is a new idea from Deepan from British Gas the Ember London Exchange. And the idea with this is for companies using Ember to exchange ideas, give talks at each other's offices, um, 
set up video calls. He's got some cool things in mind for this, but I think primarily it'll start there with the kind of brown, lag, brown bag lunch exchanges and things like that. And again, we are taking the tack of hosting these things as GitHub repos, so it's really easy to contribute to them, make changes, give feedback, and everything. Um, and EmberConf is coming up in March. Uh, who's going this year? OK, I can't make it. I'm very sad about that. Um, but it's going to be amazing. The lineup looks absolutely incredible. Uh, enjoy it. So that's all from me. I'm sorry if it was a bit long. So, Zhu, if you want to bring your laptop up, I'll get on with the first talk. <laughs>